The transport category aircraft certification process um, is a very involved process. It's, it's a very costly process uh, and aircraft manufacturers that go down this path have to be committed to spending uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to bring that type of an aircraft to market. It starts with an initial design and from that initial design uh, the aircraft that is produced is then subjected to uh, dynamic flight testing uh, if the airplane, once the airplane satisfies all those requirements and of course adjustments are made along the way for the certification process, the aircraft is given an original type certificate by the FAA. And so the aircraft manufacturer is allowed to produce aircraft and sell them. As time goes on, uh, technology advances and the manufacturer identifies ways to take that original design and make it better. So at this point, the man, aircraft manufacturer would file what's called an amended type certificate application for a derivative aircraft from the baseline aircraft. The regulatory authority is now going to focus on what's changed. Well, the FAA as an, as an administrative agency is actually very small and they, they just don't have the manpower to oversee all of those tests that go with uh, an amended type certificate. So they, they delegate some of that authority. And, and that's what happened here. MCAS wasn't necessarily a priority. And it's problematic because the narrative around the MCAS system and its capabilities and what it was supposed to control, that was never fully revealed to the FAA in this case. And so that's, that's really where uh, the problem started. It was with the narrative that was being presented to the FAA and the lack of oversight in the amended type certificate process. The result was that the MCAS system that was initially presented to the FAA at the beginning of the amended type certificate process was not the same system that ended up in the aircraft. Okay, so how do we fix it? That was the question. Well, and, and there's, two, there's two paths to take. First, in the transport category aircraft, it makes sense to say once that original type certificate is issued, the ability to go in and get an amendment to that original type certificate ends after 20 years. So, so here's how that would work. An aircraft manufacturer goes out, they design an aircraft, they apply for the original type certificate in 2020. If they get it in let's say 2025, then they're only going to have 20 years. So until the year 2045, during that 20 year period, to go in and seek an amendment to that original type certificate. So by the time 2045 rolls around, if the, if the aircraft manufacturer wants to make subsequent changes, design changes, they have to start over and get a new initial type certificate, okay? The second uh, component to resolving this problem would be we need to step in and take a look at this delegation authority that the FAA is uh, utilizing with aircraft manufacturers in the transport category aircraft. And so um, we need to step in and review in what areas the FAA can uh, delegate that type of oversight authority with transport category aircraft certification. Um, well, the two obstacles come to mind right away. Uh, one would be money. Um, the FAA uh, has a budget, and these are very costly measures from the standpoint of the FAA to go down this path uh, is going to need more engineers, they're going to need more administrators, uh, they're just going to need to become bigger as an agency. And for that to happen, Congress has to be prepared to spend the money to make that happen. It's all, there's also going to be a cost to um, the industry. 
we have to understand that by implementing the proposal of a 20 year cap on the validity of that original type certificate to actually be amended, we have to recognize that that's gonna impose a greater financial cost on the aircraft manufacturers, that they're not gonna have as much time to get a return of an, on their investment for the aircraft that they produce with the designs. And so we're, the aircraft are gonna end up costing more, which means the airlines are gonna end up paying more for those planes. And that's gonna trickle down into uh, cost for the flying public in those seats.